there is a big problem in chess right now. The problem is that pawn grabbers such as myself are looked down upon by the rest of the community. It's a very, very harmful prejudice, but one of the men that is standing up for people like me is Yasser Sirwain, Sirwain. If you haven't heard of him, search him up, Yasser, top bloke. I'm pretty sure he used to um, actually be around Bobby Fischer when Fischer was playing. I'm sure he trained with him or something. Anyway, point is, if Yasser is such a good player, and Yasser was, you know, acquaintances with the man, Bobby Fischer, and Yasser promotes pawn grabbing, maybe there's something to it. And in this game, just a, you know, random online game that I played the other day, I will be demonstrating why pawn grabbing is so great. So, we start with e5, e5, e4, and d5. We have the Scandinavian defense, and the only valid move is to take. And this knight f6 line is so popular at the moment. I think it's called the Portuguese gambit. And the point is that white struggles to defend this pawn. And if white plays c4, trying to hang on to it, then I think c6 is the move. And if white takes, then after knight takes, it's very hard to play d4 because black has such a strong grip on it. And if you try to play like knight f3 to, you know, add another layer of protection, then e5 shuts it down, moves like bishop g4, pin the knight to the queen. It's an uncomfortable position for white and black is a bit better. So I actually watched a Daniel Naraditsky, Naraditsky game where he recommended bishop to b5 check. Because if c6 is played, you just take it and bring the bishop back to e2. And if knight to d7 is played, which is one of the more popular moves, then personally I like to try and hang on to the pawn. You know, the computer prefers d4 and just giving the pawn back and developing normally. But what did I say in the intro? I'm a dirty little pawn grabber, so I want to keep that pawn. We have a6, and I could take. Maybe, prob probably bishop takes, and then moves like d4, knight f3, knight c3. I've got a nice little center going, right? But I decide on bishop a4, because it's actually quite difficult for black to break this pin. And if black can't break the pin, moves like e6 and c6 trying to challenge my pawn aren't great because c6 is controlled twice. And if e6, then black has to damage his structure because this bishop is blocked in by the knight. So instead, he goes b5. b5, I think, is the best move? Yeah, it's the best move. And after c takes b5, if black takes back, then I take and then takes, and then I probably just develop normally and go, look, I'm up a pawn. I mean, sure, it's an isolated queen's pawn, but I'm up a pawn, and I've got a past a pawn, although it's going to take a while to get them going. But knight b6 is played, which I think, I think that was the top move, just attacking the bishop, and if the bishop moves to, say, b3, then this pawn falls, and this pawn, you could take, but probably bishop takes, stops me from castling. This is very uncomfortable, even though I'm up a pawn. So I decide on b takes, a6, discovered check. And after knight takes, queen takes, bishop d7. I'm currently up three pawns. Black has lost the a, b, and d pawn, and I have lost zero pawns. This pawn has gone on a bit of a journey, as has this pawn, but my queen is under attack, this pawn is under attack, and this pawn is under attack. So logically I'm like, okay, I should try and defend one of them. So I go to b3, I consider a6 to be lost, so I'm not worried about that, but I'd like to try and hang on to d5, and if I can, force black to take d5, but facilitate trades because even if both of these pawns fall, I'm still up a pawn. 
real quick if you're enjoying the analysis and you'd like to see more content from me in the future please drop a like and subscribe it really appreciate growing the channel trying to get to 200 subs as of the time of recording so that would be pretty damn cool but like i mentioned i hang on to d5 pawn so my opponent takes a6 and i'm up two pawns my my, my pawn grabbing is working Yes, I only have a queen developed and all my other pieces are stuck on their home squares. But I'm up two pawns. So knight c3 defends the pawn. g6 looks to Fienketo, his bishop. g6 is an odd move. Um, I was expecting something like c6, trying to activate this bishop. but Or maybe rook takes? I don't know, bishop takes looks better to me. But my opponent goes g6, which gives me time to play d4 and knight to e2, just supporting my center. And it's, although, you know, they are doubled isolated pawns, like those are my two extra pawns, it's not that easy to take them with black. The bishops is really awkward on d7 as well, because this pawn is cutting off a lot of where the bishop would like to go. So we have castles, castles, and queen a8. Setting up a scope on d5 and just pressuring a2, also defending the rook. I go queen c4. Queen c4, I play because I would like to go b3 and bishop b2 because I'm not really sure where to put this bishop. But after c6, my plan changes a bit because I take. I was expecting bishop takes here, but f3 probably just cuts this diagonal off forever and you know bearing in mind I'm up two pawns but the position is basically equal still but black has to prove it like black can't just go oh yeah computer says plus 0.4 it's a draw it's like you know I, I am still up two pawns and they are connected past pawns and if you let you know say these pawns magically um, let's say they just magically appear over here and we get this kind of position, then I'm completely winning because they're just going to push in and promote and black's going to have to sacrifice material for them. So although the computer says it's equal, black has to play very accurately, otherwise these pawns are going to get going and create a winning advantage because black has no real attack on my king. My king is very safe. So bishop f5 attacks the queen. I go to g3. We have rook b8. Rook b8 stops b3 because this pawn is pinned to the rook and it also just pressures my b pawn. So if I move my bishop say then b2 falls. So my position is really difficult to play. Like my rook is basically stuck defending. My bishop's basically stuck. This rook can maybe move. My queen, it's a bit delicate because I haven't really got much for pawn like presence in the center. Black's pieces can like jump around to attack my queen quite easily. So I decide, okay, I'm going to go d5, win a tempo, and I'm going to play knight to d4. You know, saying hi to the bishop, going, look, you fancy a trade. We have knight h5 attacking my queen and opening the bishop up on the knight. So I need to move my queen with to defend the knight. Also pressure e7. And this bishop is still under attack. And here my opponent plays a very, very strange move. He goes bishop e6. Now if I take with the pawn, then bishop takes d4. I'd seen this line, but I wasn't sure where to put my queen here. Computer wants h3, but I thought that my knight was very strong, and my opponent's king isn't isn't actually exposed. Like although I took on here and opened his king up, I can't exploit it anyway. So I decided, okay, I'm going to take with the knight because if I take with the pawn, I'm going to lose the knight anyway. So I'm going to take with the knight. And as opposed to the previous position, 
I still have this pawn instead of trading it on the on, on i7. This pawn kind of locks black's position down a bit. Also, there's just less pressure on my queen. You know, if a move like bishop d4 is played now, again, it wants queen h3. But, I don't know, I just feel like with the board a little bit less open, just with this pawn on e6, I'm a bit happier. Also, as opposed to this position, I have an extra pawn, right? This is basically the same position, but I have another pawn, so I'm up three pawns. Uh, but my opponent plays rook bb6, threatening the pawn. And here, here, as I explained before, my pieces are really, it's really hard to put them anywhere. So as I mentioned before, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm two pawns up. These are my two pawns. This pawn is about to fall, but it's okay. So this position would be fantastic if they were up the board. So let's just go. Let's just go. A4. Rook takes. I'm going to move my queen in. He attacks my queen. I move my queen. Pinning this rook to the king. If he plays something like rook here, then I take the queen. So my queen is pinning this rook to the king and this rook to the queen. It's quite nice. Like, geometrically, that looks really cool. Um, so knight f6 kicks my queen. But I just go to f3. So this pin is gone, but this pin remains. And you might say, oh, why not rook a6? Then the queen's defended. Yeah, but then I'm just going to trade. And remember, I'm up two pawns. Black is going to have to play very, very accurately to hold this. So we have h6, which is just a weird move. Like, am I really going to bring my bishop to g5? Really? It seems like he's just losing time. But it is tough to play with black here. Like, what is black supposed to actually do? The computer literally wants to trade queens, which is absurd. Like, no human is going to trade queens down two pawns here. So, once moves like rook e5, queen a5. Queen a5 makes sense, because it stops a5 and controls b4. So that makes a lot of sense to me. But it is a difficult move to find, in fairness. But my opponent plays h6, and I just go a5. And I'm like, bro, I'm pushing. Again, h7, a6. It's that simple. I'm like, if I can just get this pawn down the board, then I'm going to win. And if you take this, then I don't take the rook. Because if I take the rook, my opponent's fine. No, I take the queen because the pieces defend each other through the rook. So my opponent can't take it. So he plays queen a7, stopping the advancement. And I just go bishop e3, attacking the queen. Queen goes back, a7. This rook is still pinned to the queen, remember? Unless he goes to c8. But then again, I'm happy to trade. This bishop defends the pawn, so this rook is free to go to, like, d1 or something. Although, apparently, this is the idea if I do that. So, it's probably better to bring this rook. But this is just impossible for black now. My opponent plays rook a6. And just hangs his queen. Just completely hangs his queen. So, he plays on, to his credit, but I don't really know why. Um, I do have 20 seconds, so, you know, I just come back. I'm obviously more than happy to trade here, because I'm up like a, qu a queen and two pawns. Knight attacks my queen, I promote. I'm like, bro, if you want my queen, you can have it. I literally don't care. Yeah, the best move is to promote, because it doesn't matter that I lose a queen, because I have another one. The rook moves, I attack it, I attack it. I just take. Because I'm up so much material, it doesn't matter. I just need to get all the pieces off. And after knight d5, my opponent resigns because... I mean, it's game over. It was game over, like, back here. But he just plays on for another 10 moves for whatever reason. And effectively, my um, 
dirty little pawn grabbing right at the start of the game with um with this you know the height the height of the pawn grabbing a position that Yasser would he he'd have wet dreams about this right um you know up, up, up three pawns with a terrible like position um and yeah my extra pawns turn out to be the thing that wins me the game because I just push it and he, he has zero pawns on the queen side and pieces block pawns a lot worse than pawns block pawns obviously so next time next time you play some weird gambit line like your opponent plays some weird gambit maybe consider taking the pawns and just praying that you don't get checkmated can't guarantee that it'll work.